Hey, how's it going guys? Today I'm going to be showing you guys how to kill Kurasks, but before I start this video, if you're looking for more Slayer guides, please check out the description box below for a full list of all the guides I've posted thus far. Enjoy the rest of the video. So I've broken up this guide into three different sections. The first section goes over the information about the monster, as well as the recommended items I would bring. The second section goes over the armor selection, depending on the attack style you want to use. And the third section goes over each of the locations, what your inventory and quick prayer should look like, as well as an example kill for the monster. So feel free to pause the video now to write down the timestamps, and then you can skip around the video to watch the parts that you want to watch. So I'll quickly go over the information charts for Kurasks, so you can have a better understanding of this monster before going in. They have a combat level of 106, they have 97 hit points, they're currently in two different locations including the Fremnik Slayer Dungeon and the Ironworth Dungeon. They attack with a melee style crush attack, and the max hit of this hit is 11. They are aggressive monsters, and they must be killed with leaf-bladed weapons, broad-tipped ammunition, or the magic dart spell, and I'll make sure to go over all the different weapons that you can use in the armor section of this tutorial. Looking at the Slayer information, you will need at least level 70 in Slayer in order to damage them, and you'll get 97 Slayer XP per kill, and they can be assigned by 5 different Slayer Masters. Looking at the combat stats, Kuras are somewhat strong, it does have level 105 in strength and defense, but you can also see that it only has level 67 in attack, which means that its accuracy is pretty low if you wear good armor. In terms of the aggressive stats, you can see that it doesn't have any, and looking at the defensive stats, they are weakest to stab attacks, magic attacks, and range attacks, but even the slash and crush defenses aren't that high, but I would recommend still to use weapons that the Kuras are weak to. Other than that, you can see it doesn't have any other strength bonuses, and these guys are immune to both poison and venom attacks. And just a quick note, although weapons such as the Toxic Blowpipe and Ceradomen Godsword will not do any damage to these monsters, their special attack will still work and can still heal health and prayer points regardless. There is also a superior version that I want to cover if you do have the bigger and better reward purchased from a Slayer Master, and I'll just briefly go over the most important details so you can be more prepared for it. But its combat level is 295, it has 420 hit points, it only attacks with a melee style crush attack, and its max hit is 36. Looking at the Slayer info, you can get 2,797 Slayer XP per kill, the combat stats are very high, and its defensive stats are a bit stronger than a normal Kurask. In terms of how to fight it, my recommendation is that if you're using melee, Turning on the Protect from Melee prayer will make you completely invincible. If you're using Ranger Magic, safe spotting them is completely safe since it only attacks with melee. So here are some items that I will recommend to you that may help you on your Slayer task. A Rune Pouch is a great item to bring here because it can hold 16,000 of 3 different types of runes. You can fill the pouch with your High Alchemy runes, and you can also store some of the rune drops that you get from this monster into your pouch. You can buy it from the Slayer store for 1250 Slayer points, or you can buy it from the Bounty Hunter store for 1.2 million points. This monster drops a lot of herbs, so bringing a herb sack with you can save a lot of inventory space. You can store 30 of any unnoted grimy herb, and you can buy this item from any Slayer shop for 750 points, along with having level 58 in herb lore. This monster drops a lot of seeds, so bringing a seed box with you can help free up some inventory space. The seed box can store up to 6 different kinds of seeds of any amount, and you get this item from doing the Tithe Farm minigame and purchasing it from Farmer Greg Collar for 250 points. So now that we've gone through the information and the recommended items, I want to go over all of the weapons that you can use to damage these monsters so you can choose which attack style best fits your needs. The first weapon that you can use is a Leaf Bladed Spear requiring level 55 Slayer and level 50 attack to wield, and you can purchase this item from any Slayer Master for 31,000 coins. The attacking bonuses are pretty low relative to all the other weapons that you can use, and you do have to take into account that this weapon is two-handed, which means you can't wear a Dragon Offender or a shield with this weapon. Furthermore, the weapon's attack speed is only 5, which is slower than a Dragon Scimitar in comparison, and the combat styles all have shared experience in attack strength and defense, which is not ideal for pure accounts. The second weapon that you can use is a Leaf Bladed Battle Axe, requiring level 65 attack and 55 Slayer to wield, and this can be obtained from the Grand Exchange, or as a drop from Kurasks or the Superior King Kurask. This weapon is one of the best for killing Kurasks because not only are the attack and strength bonuses very high, but using this weapon against a Kurask will also deal an extra 17.5% more damage, meaning that the stats are actually much higher than what it says on the chart. It should be noted that it does have an attack speed of 5, which is a bit slower than a Dragon Scimitar in comparison, and the only styles you can use are Slash and Crush attacks, which also means that the Kuras will be able to defend a little bit better against it, 
but still, this would be my weapon of choice if I had to choose one. The third weapon that you can use is the Leaf Bladed Sword, requiring level 50 attack and 55 Slayer to wield, and it can be bought from the Grand Exchange or received as a draw from Kurasks, the superior version King Kurask, or from a Turroth. This weapon is very interesting because it also provides a 17.5% damage boost against Kurasks, but looking at the attacking stats and the strength bonuses, it is noticeably lower than the Battle Axe. However, the strengths of this weapon is that it does have a good stab attack bonus, and since Kurasks are weak to stab attacks, this will make your weapon hit more accurately, and also the attack speed of this weapon is 4, meaning that it hits 20% faster than the Battle Axe. You can also kill Kurasks with magic, but you must use the Magic Dart spell in order to damage them. The Magic Dart spell requires level 50 magic and 55 Slayer to cast, and you must be wearing a Slayer Staff, a Slayer Staff Enchanted, or a Staff of the Dead in order to cast a spell. The max hit of the Magic Dart spell depends on your magic level. At level 99 magic, while wielding the Slayer Staff, the max hit is 20. It is 22 if wielding the Staff of the Dead, or 31 if wielding the Slayer Staff Enchanted. The max hit of the Magic Dart spell can also be raised by wearing armor that gives a damage boost, like the Cult Necklace, Tormented Bracelet, and Ancestral Armor, making it possible to hit in the high 30s. My recommendation is that if you have a high magic level and good magic damage boosting gear, magic can give you more kills per hour than range, but it also should be noted the cost is a little bit higher, at around 200 coins per cast. Range is another option if you're looking to save spot Kurasks, but you must use one of these three types of ammunition listed on the screen in order to damage them. In terms of damage per second, using Amethyst Broad Bolts will give you the fastest kills, Broad Bolts will give you the second fastest, and Broad Arrows the third. And I've also listed which bows and crossbows you can use for each type of ammunition, and using the highest level crossbow or bow will provide you the highest DPS for killing Kurasks. So now we will go over the armor setups, and feel free to use the timestamps on the screen now to choose your preferred attack style. So let's go over a melee setup that maximizes your attack strength, defense, and prayer bonuses. On this chart here, I've highlighted some of the best armor choices in green on the left hand side, and the items to the right are also very good alternatives for the setup. So using the chart that I made, I created a couple of different example armor setups for both higher and lower level players. Feel free to use it as a reference for building your own setup, and don't be afraid to swap things out depending on your needs. So let's go over a ranging setup that maximizes your range and prayer bonuses. On this chart here, I've listed some of the best items that you can wear from the left to the right. All of the items that are highlighted in green are the items that I would recommend that you would try to focus on, and the items to the right are still very good alternatives for the setup. So using the chart that I made, I created a couple of different example armor setups for both higher and lower level players. Feel free to use it as a reference for building your own setup, and don't be afraid to swap things out depending on your needs. So now let's talk about a magic setup, and on this chart here, I've highlighted some of the best armor choices in green on the left hand side, and the items to the right are also very good alternatives that you can use for the setup. So using the chart that I made, I created a couple of different example armor setups for both higher and lower level players. Feel free to use it as a reference for building your own setup, and don't be afraid to swap things out depending on your needs. So hopefully by now, you have chosen the armor that you're going to wear for the Slayer task. In this next section, I will be covering each of the locations, what you should bring in your inventory, and I'll also give you guys an example kill depending on the attack style that you have chosen. Going over the Fremenic Slayer dungeon location, you are not allowed to use a cannon here, but there are safe spots available for using Ranger Magic. The fastest way to get here is by using a Slayer Ring teleport to the Relic of Slayer Caves, and that will teleport you right inside the dungeon. The next fastest way is by using the Fairy Ring code AJR, and you just need to run a little east to the dungeon. The third fastest way is by getting yourself to the Relica House Portal, and you can do that by moving your house to Relica for 10,000 coins along with level 30 construction, or you could also make yourself a Relica House Tablet by using a scroll of redirection that you get from Nightmare Zone on a Teleport to House Tablet requiring level 30 construction to make, and then you can exit your house portal and run east. The next fastest way is by teleporting to Camelot and running to the dungeon, and you can do this by using a Camelot Teleport which you can buy from the Grand Exchange, or by using 5 Air Runes and 1 Law Rune along with level 45 Magic. And taking a quick look inside the dungeon, you'll see that the Kurasks are located at the end of the dungeon. There are two agility shortcuts you can take, and you can also use a Summer Pie boost to raise your agility by 5 levels to use them. If you cannot use them, you can take the long route, but I would recommend drinking a dose of stamina potion whilst you do this. So here is what I would bring in my inventory for each attack style, and you can copy it completely, or you can change it depending on your needs. Same with the quick prayer settings, here would be the settings I would choose, but if you want to change them, 
feel free to do so. So here's an example of how I would kill Karask with melee and there really is not much to it. Just drink your stat boosting potions, activate your quick pairs, make sure to have your auto retaliate on, and choose the stab option on your weapon if it's available. You can also use the slayer only room to the south, just climb up the steps and you'll have access to the room. So here's how I would safe spot them with either range or magic, and there are a few safe spots that you can use which I've also highlighted on the floor. There's a safe spot right near the first corridor, and you can also use the one in the northwestern part of the first room. There's also a safe spot in the slayer only room to the east, and it's pretty simple once you get there, just drink your stab boosting potions, activate your quick prayers, and then you should be able to attack them without any problems. Going over the Iworth dungeon location, in order to access this dungeon, you will need to have the Song of the Elves quest completed before you can use it. Technically, you are allowed to use a cannon at this location, but since Kuras cannot be damaged without one of the weapons I've described previously, there's no reason to bring one for this monster. Also, there are safe spots available which I will cover later in the example kill. The fastest way to get here is by getting yourself to the Priftinus house portal, and you can do this by moving your house to Priftinus for 50,000 coins along with level 70 construction, or you could also make yourself a Priftinus house tablet by using a scroll or redirection that you get from Nightmare Zone on a teleport to house tablet requiring level 70 construction to make, and then you can exit your house portal and then run south. The next fastest way is by using a teleport crystal and teleporting yourself to Priftinus and then running southwest. And taking a look inside the dungeon, the Kurask are located in the southernmost part, and there are two different rooms which you can use for killing them. So here is what I would bring in my inventory for each attack style, and you can copy it completely or you can change it depending on your needs. Same with the quick prayer settings, here would be the settings I would choose, but if you want to change them, feel free to do so. So here's an example of how I would kill Kurask with melee, and there really is not much to it. Just drink your stat boosting potions, activate your quick prayers, make sure to have your auto retaliate on, and choose the stab option on your weapon if it's available. There's also another room just southwest that you can use for killing Kurasks. So here's how I would safe spot them with either ranger magic, and there are a couple safe spots that you can use which I've also highlighted on the floor. There's a safe spot right near the first corridor, and you can also use the one in the southwestern corridor, and either of them work. Just make sure to drink your stat boosting potions, activate your quick prayers, and then you should be able to attack them without any problems. Anyways guys, I'm going to end the tutorial here. If it has helped you out, I'd greatly appreciate it if you could leave a like on this video so more people can find it. And also make sure to check out my other Slayer guides in the description box below. But anyways, thanks so much for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Later!